everyone, Tommy from TechNexus, and thanks for joining me on this week's video. Now, I wanted to just cover some things in um, Plant 3D in regards to project settings. Uh, I get sort of a few queries every now and again in regards to sort of how these things are, uh, you know, set up or best practices. Um, you know, I think everyone is is quite different in the way they set it up, and um, I'd like to go through today and just go through sort of uh, some of the things that um, that I consider my own best practices and, and what I've found over the years. Um, drawing properties. Now you can add categories in here for drawing properties. These could also um, even be tied back to the attributes in the title blocks. So, uh, you know, in here we could have uh, something called uh, revision one, uh, and then you know rev one title, and say revision one title. Okay. Now that means now that we have that in here as a, as a category, we can put this as a field. Um, on the title blocks in a, in a PNID. Now, it entirely depends on, on how you or your company does it. Some people do title blocks within, uh, you know, things like Vault, um, possibly project-wise, I don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, sometimes you might link it back to either Excel spreadsheets or XML files or whatever it might be. Uh, again, everyone's completely different and there's no real, I guess, right or wrong way, but um, if you wanted to Sort of have this information for the implant 3d outside of normal attributes and you could put the revisions in here and then these could be placed on the title block so uh, another thing to to think about there if you wanted to sort of have all of these properties in in the um uh drawing properties within within the project itself uh file name format um so you can come in here and say you know things like area um you know two or three numbers dash and then uh, let's say discipline. Um, now, I did go through and um, show this uh, last week or the week before about adding um, a pull down in here. So you can create a custom pull down in here that is sort of a basically hard coded to a, to a list if you really wanted to. So you can do that sort of stuff as well. Um, it just really depends on what you're doing uh, or would, you know, where maybe the client is dictating this or maybe some sort of corporate standard or whatever, but um, you can sort of pretty much put you know, basically almost anything in here that you want. Now parts, I <clears throat> whenever I create a project, I like to leave them all as as standard paths, but um, this being on BIM 360, you can't change it. But things like specs, um, if it was on a network project, I would create the project and then come back in here and change this to be on a network drive, um, maybe under a client name or, or a client site or whatever it might be. So that way all the specs are pointing to one path. Um, that's really probably the only path that I'd change in here, um, the, the, the spec sheets, just because rather than having six projects with six different spec sheets folders, um, we can point all of these to, to one directory on the network. Now project details. This is also where I would recommend linking things like title block attributes into project data, client information, any other categories that you want to, to put in here that might be uh, linked back to something globally on the project on, on whichever title block it might be. So um, you can see here the project description, the project number. This is These are fields that we can put on the title blocks. Uh, they're not attributes, but they are fields. Um, so you know, if you've got uh, the project description and the, and the project number on a PNID sheet, um, then, you know, again, we can link those. So next time you open up the PNID sheet, this will regenerate itself as well. So uh, when you are doing the title box, think about stuff for the title box that is, you know, project wide, whether it's this general properties or these custom categories in here. And the things like drawing properties will be you know, properties pertaining to that file itself. Okay, so have a look at doing those. Reports, I don't really bother with the reports too much in here. These are predefined ones in Data Manager, but you know, most of the time you can just generate a full list out of the whole project and then edit it in Excel as well. Um, the plant content folder, this, uh, because I'm, I'm essentially a one-man band here at the moment, um, mine is defaulting to C drive, but you can change it to be um, 
under a, a network drive and you can see here if you hover your mouse it says you must open plant 3d as an admin to change the plant content folder location so you might change this to be a z drive t drive um, or whatever it might be and um, one of the other things as well is things like these inline assets so things like valves this this doesn't have to necessarily be valves but valves is just a good example um, I don't usually like to play with the standard valve symbology I like to leave it and then I'll make a new one here and I'll call it um, right, so I'll say tech nexus gate valve okay and then under here I can have my own sort of uh, client specific or, or company specific uh, gate valves and then I add symbols from up here the only reason I like to do that is just from a, a, a checking um, standpoint if I know the standard gate valve works and mine doesn't then at least I can sort of troubleshoot what I've done or go back and, and sort of uh, see what the standard one is doing in regards to any other sort of properties and then I can go back and apply them to here as well so um, again it's just something I like to do I like to keep them separate that way I don't mess with the original um, setup as well so that might be something to consider is either put you know the client name in front of it or you know some sort of short form so that way um, uh, you know we can stick it uh, you know if I put a Z underscore there then you can see it's going to push it down to the bottom of the list or we might do a underscore and push it to the top so and just keep your stuff your customized stuff separate to the out of the box stuff otherwise um, you know if it does break you've got something to go back to and that can apply for all of them as well also as well any adding any other properties so if I add it at this uh, at this uh, gate valve level then you can see test one lives here but test one doesn't live under three-way valve so that's the whole parent child relationship if I add a new property up here call it test two then you can see they all have test two as well so if you need something specific for this uh, class then add it at the level if it can be for every class and add it up top and you can see there where that asterisk is uh, that is you know grabbed from the parent level up there um, there's, uh, let's have a look down in here, layering color settings, I'm sure I've gone through this before, you can automate it, I personally like to leave it uh, layer by line number and color um, by service, it's just what I've been used to, but obviously if uh, you know you want to have it all by nominal diameter then you can set all of that up in here, it is uh, you know, let's say quite limited um, in regards to what you can set up here, but even at the most basic you can say uh, you know, color by layer um, and then that way if you set it up in the layer however you want then you know that's what it's going to do but most of the common ones I've seen in my time in the industry as well is color by service uh, nominal diameter um, I have done one project where we did it by status I think it was existing demolition and, and new um, but usually sort of service and, and, and D seem to be the sort of more common ones in here piping connection setting this is just a, a monster in itself be careful of trying not to get too many in here because sometimes you might find that you know certain uh, end conditions might sort of cross pollinate across other end conditions so you, um, but just be careful of that as well just be mindful that what you're doing in here as well can affect other uh, end conditions worst comes to worst I know it's not very nice but uh, you know having uh, you know universal connections joined together it, it it's not well, to me not very well recommended to do universal connections everywhere because then you're just going to be forcing connections on one another you want to make sure that you are doing proper connections you know one against the other which is um, sort of what you want so for something like flanged you know you got flange and then lap joint flanges are obviously the two that are uh, going to be able to join together um, sometimes you might find pressure class and facing we can turn off um, just because maybe if you're connecting you know things like steel to plastic or whatever you might need to take these off or um, you know modify these to, to suit um, but you will sort of work that out and th this is a uh, another place where, where we've done in the past is things like the, the plastic to steel and instead of saying 110 plastic to 100 steel we make the the plastic DN 100 or nominal diameter of 100 um, 
but in the long description it calls it up as a 110 so then that way everything sort of fits and works but that might be something that we can have a look at um, in future stuff as well um, there's nothing else really in here that, that I can sort of talk about and cover these all of these plant 3d class definitions are all pretty much the same as the PNID ones you know anything you do at an upper level scrolls through down to, to, to you know the, the children in here um, obviously anything sort of these are the pipe properties in here but um, obviously you know it all comes from the specs as, as well in um, uh, as, uh, which is you know standard for, for everything it needs to be driven from a spec anyway so but if you needed to add some extra properties I guess this is where you could do it uh, in here as well so um, things like ISO and ortho I, I reckon ISO and ortho is probably something I can cover in another video so um, nothing really sort of too special that I want to go through here but um, I guess this just sort of gives you an idea on how I sort of start thinking about setting up these uh, class definitions um, and then we can go through these ones a little bit later so hopefully this video has been quite informative for you thumbs up if you like the video thumbs down if you didn't but please do subscribe to my channel uh, and I'll uh, see you next week for something else Autodesk or AutoCAD or Navisworks related and uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything that I've covered here today so and again thank you very much and I'll see you next week see you later